This television series is sponsored by My Wellness by Nature. Coming up on the So Thrive series. Frank, your stories. I'm in shock. That's how you, you guide your wellness every day. You just live that way instead of waiting till you get sick. Whew. People are looking for natural remedies. That is something the Mayan culture has always done. Hello again, Thrive Tribe, and welcome to my joy journey. One that empowered, educated, and healed me after a year where everything changed. If you've followed me at all, you know that I am all about living full out in the Courage Zone. I've been inspired now more than ever to receive knowledge, choose to live in strength, love, and faith. Life is all about the choices we make, and we can choose joy. I have accepted the challenge to share what I learned from my world about what it means to truly thrive. All of this with people that want to heal the planet. If you know me at all, this screams So Thrive Tribe. All right, Queen. It's you and me, girl. Coming up next on So Thrive with Tiffany Hendry. You have to find joy in the simple things. Grandmother said to me, you're going to be a healer. I said, wait a minute, I'm going to be a healer. Here, I'm nine years old, yeah. right? What's hey, that? Healer, what does that mean? <laughs> she said, you're going to be a wonderful healer. In part one of So Thrive with Tiffany Hendra, the producers of My Wellness by Nature pack their camera bags and positive vibes as we charted our course for discovery and adventure, all with the intention of changing our viewers' lives. Our destination, a wellness retreat located on a peaceful river peninsula right in the heart of Belize, a place offering experiential healing as a method of actively engaging in life experiences for true self-discovery and healing. No one believed that you could be a full-time yoga teacher. It doesn't matter to me if everyone says no. I need to say yes. I <laughs> That is a tweetable. <laughs> we not only discovered how the rest of the planet survived the pandemic, but how we are all survivors in one way or the other. On today's So Thrive, we get super deep into some of the favorite topics that you, my So Thrive tribe, are passionate about. We've flown wellness TV and radio personality, Dr. Derek De Silva, all the way from New Jersey to South Lake, Texas, for an insightful conversation about better living. Dr. De Silva, an internal physician, is considered a pioneer in many areas of medicine and innovative technology. You might recognize him from his guest appearance on The Real Housewives of New Jersey, but I know him better as the doctor's doctor for anti-aging and my wellness by nature. Dr. De Silva, it is so good to finally meet you. I feel like I know you. I watch, I binge all your videos. So you're in Texas. I was wondering if you're gonna wear boots today. You know, I was, I was <laughs> like, going to wear boots I, and I, I promise the next time, I have great but boots. But you have boots? Oh, are you kidding? I've got a collection of boots. Your next visit. Promise. I wanna see the boots. Okay, so let's just rip the Band-Aid off. Okay. It's been a remarkable year. Have you noticed major changes or have you had to do what we're hearing, the pivot, the shift? in your own life? So 2020 for me has been very enlightening. It is, I've used the time and every single patient that comes in has a story. 
every patient, Tiffany. It's incredible. And I try to take them from a negative into a positive. Let's not talk about the negatives. Let's talk about the positives. Mm -hmm. How have you grown? Mm -hmm. And I think turning that conversation around with people is important. We have to find joy in the simple things. I am an addict for joy. It's called oxytocin and endorphins. That's what it's called. That's what joy brings you. Going for a walk. Yeah. Spending time with your loved one. Going to the beach. Playing with your children. Playing with your grandchildren. I'm telling you. Joy sparkers. I call them joy sparkers. Yes. And if nothing else, sit outside. I love grounding. Oh. Earthing. Yes. Take the shoes off. Take the oh, shoes yes. off. Can you touch on that too for anyone that doesn't understand what grounding is. I know I lived in California for a long time, so anytime I was feeling stress, I knew to go straight to the water and walk and the negative ions and all of that. So yes. can you explain what that yes. so does exactly? What happens is, is that our body is under constant attack. Inflammation, uh, the, the prescription medicines we're taking. We have too many of these bad ions that collect in our body. When your feet touch the ground, and this is real science. This is not voodoo, all right? This is for real. Look up Dr. Steven Sinatra. In fact, I just interviewed him on a program that I'm doing. You take your shoes off and you walk on Mother Earth. You are going to send all the bad ions out and all the good ions back in. Now, one of the best places to do this is at the beach. Why? Lightning hits the Earth 2,500 times a second. Lightning is constantly hitting the earth from all over the world. And that transformation of those ions into the ground, through the water, and into our bodies is extremely therapeutic. The best place to do it, and it's not to walk on the dry sand, it's to walk on the wet sand. The water line. The water is a conductor. Yeah. So it's a conductor that pulls the bad out and sends the good in. And people that have various maladies, they have joint discomforts, they're, they're, they have problems with, with their nervous system, they have problems with whatever. Go for a walk on the beach. Do you remember walking as a child on the beach? Oh, and even playing just, how good it feels? Right, and even being barefoot constantly as a child growing up in Houston, and then going through health issues, and I had a holistic doctor tell me that. He was like, you guys go down to the water line and walk. If you can do 30 minutes, awesome. But even just 10, 15 minutes, the electromagnetic. Yes. Right? Yes. It's, it's incredible. It is you, literally. So what I've been hearing that even just walking on concrete is better than Correct. a thing. Correct. True. Uh, because again, as long as there's a connection to the earth, mm -hmm. that's what you want. I, we live in a town home with, mm -hmm. I don't, I have to drive to a park. Right. And I thought, I'm going to try it. And you know what? I felt it's better. Good. It's good. There's a place that I go to in Sarasota and this beautiful, beautiful hotel. Right across the street, there is, there is a little park and they have seashells around the trees. So I go stand on the seashells and take my slippers off and I stand on the seashells and just kind of hang out there. People look at me like, why, why is this homeless guy walking around here? You know, <laughs> who's this Little homeless guy? Little do they guy? know it's Dr. D. <laughs> yeah. Who's this homeless guy? That is, it really goes back to self-love. When you're mindful of these things and you can get out in the world and actually implement them, take action. Right. And then real change. I think lasting change. Right, it's those little teeny nuggets. And I think the website is a great way to start and get people on that right path yeah. of, of, of real wellness. But again, take the step. Exactly, you're online shopping on the phone. Why don't you actually go and make a mindful choice? I wish more doctors had your mindset. And of course you integrated the best of the East and the West. Starting these little things can truly change your whole life. We hear the words, the longest journey starts with a single step. So. Do the simple steps.
My wellness journey started in 2002. I was OD'd. I was OD'd. I ended up on a bathroom floor. I was abusing painkillers and alcohol, partying all weekend. I was hanging out with toxic people, eating, not eating. I lived with major anxiety, so I was on antidepressants. I was also on anti-anxiety medication, and then I would have to take sleeping pills. I don't even know how I got to the sets. I was a working TV host in California, and I was abusing my body every which way, working too hard, working out too hard. I would go through periods of binging, purging, starving myself before a photo shoot, and my body just said no more, and I did. I almost, I almost died. It was a slow suicide, the way, the way I was living my life. When you talk about the hero's journey and a rock bottom moment, I know everyone has, everyone's rock bottom moment is different. Mine was actually <laughs> the bottom of a bathroom floor, and I'm so grateful for that moment because I had to get up off that bathroom floor and relearn just about everything. But it all started on that bathroom floor, and it, and it sounds counterintuitive, but I'm really, I'm really grateful for that bathroom floor moment. Coming up, what happened next are encounters we never thought possible. We take a never before seen tour of the Mennonite community of Belize. We were told that we were the first cameras ever allowed in. Can you believe it? We get an insider's look at this thriving community's contributions to Belize, as well as document their belief systems for better living. These are things we can all learn and live better from, regardless of where you are on the planet. This television series was produced by My Wellness by Nature, creating generation wellness together. See more at mywellnessbynature.com. Hola! Oh my gosh, it is actually working, y'all. Can I just tell you how amazing it is to not have consistent Wi-Fi? Talk about unplugging. We are gonna go across the lagoon in a boat to meet, interview, soak up the Mennonite community. We get a very rare, actually unheard of, privilege of traveling up the river to meet with and experience firsthand members of the coveted Belize Mennonite community. Can I hug you? Yeah. I can? Yeah. Oh my goodness. I'm a hugger. Yay, good to meet you. Yay. Well, it's very relaxing. We spend the day with a very high-ranking pillar of the community named Frank, one of their few English-speaking members. You are going to love him. Our belief is not have vehicles, horses, buggies, or wagons, whatever, but not not to uh, drive cars and trucks and stuff like that. What is the belief system behind that to just let go of modern technology? They just yeah. want to stay they with... They want to preserve? Yeah, they want to stay with the old stuff. We're about to pass someone. What is the typical way you interact? Their little voice. Just a stop up. Yeah. <laughs> One of the incredible things about the Belize Mennonites is, although they only account for about 11% of the population, they grow, raise cattle, and provide over 68% of the food in Belize. I would say that's an incredible responsibility and undertaking, yet you can tell that giving is a joy for them. And as we discover later, a secret to a healthier life. So along here, this doesn't look like, it kind of looks like corn, but it's not corn. It's maize. It's maize. It's maize, sort of. Yeah. What is it used for? The same as corn. You can make tortillas, yeah. you can make baking. Yeah, and uh, feed. Uh, we're buying 26,000 acres of land just to uh, make everything natural. No fertilizer, no chemical, no nothing. It's, it's going to be three miles south of this community. I'm going to build an house. Oh, awesome. That's going to call Corosalito. Do you use the word organic? Yeah, and yes, organic. Uh, and we will uh, use no fertilizer, everything awesome. organic. We will send that meat to the United States and Canada and all over the place. And we will have lone organic over there. Everything we, we plant that will be organic, corn and beans and soya and everything we will plant, but everything will be organic and cattle that will be organic. 
As we drift down a dusty road, dividing fields that seem to stretch to infinity, I watch the women, children, and men tend the crops and work the cattle with a pride I've never witnessed before. And I realize this is where pride in their life exists. They are present in the moment and so grateful. Most mothers, would they try to go a natural route with the children if a That's children cool. has a fever yeah. or something like that? Yeah, most possible. Yeah. yeah. I don't know why we all like it more natural. Of course. That's what we're trying to teach other people. Yeah, and our food here is more natural than the food in the United States. Oh, yeah. What they call natural. Yes. And ours is more natural than that. All right, Queen. It's you and me, girl. Frank decides to break tradition and allow me to drive his horse drawn buggy. Oh, that's what you have to do? Yeah. Yeah. It's just lift up. She's yeah. good. Quick. Thank you, Queen. Seriously, a modern woman being handed the reins to drive a pillar of the community's own buggy? I am absolutely honored and a little shocked to take part of this history in the making right now, and we have it on camera to share with you. <laughs> Feeling like we've created some newly established common ground between men and women, Frank invites us to his family home for a home-cooked meal and some insightful conversation about their views on better living without all the technological distractions we are inundated with, or dare I say, addicted to. One of the discussions we had with Frank and his family was about using prevention for their health rather than waiting to treat illness. So this is normal to y'all, right? It's so normal. You can just go in your front yard and yeah. grit something and grind it up, yeah. right? You like the flowers from the marina? That's for your nerves. Well, in the States, everyone is taking antidepressants and they drink way too much alcohol to calm their nerves. So you just can go pick a flower. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's how you, you guide your wellness every day. You just live that way instead of waiting till you get sick. Okay, so if I was really stressed out, I can just eat all this yeah. and I'll feel better. <laughs> you should. Anyway. Yeah, they're really pretty little flowers. Yeah, they look good. Yeah. Sweet. Good eater. <laughs> Doesn't taste, sweet very, tart. doesn't taste very good, but uh, you can eat it. Okay, would you eat it? I ate a big one. It truly is eye-opening to realize how complicated modern society can make things when we can literally have the basics right in our backyard. One of the things that I love that you shared when we asked you, what did you love most? Farming, your family, and you said, I can't pick one. I love everything about my life. Yeah. And that that is so rare to hear. And, and that's thriving to me. You're all thriving. And thank you for this beautiful meal. So good, I can feel the love in it. To see more from our Mennonite adventure, including behind the scenes clips, watch us online at mywellnessbynature.com slash so thrive. The most overlooked organ in the body is what? But the, the liver? Most, the liver. You are absolutely correct. Does anybody say, man, I wonder how my liver's doing? Isn't it one of those organs that does regenerate? Yes, but that, that has nothing to do with the function. Right. If your liver doesn't do what it's supposed to do, and it's fatty, you have a blood vessel that's called the inferior vena cava. It takes all of the blood, all of the venous blood, all of the blood that doesn't have oxygen, it brings it through that inferior vena cava, and guess where it runs? It runs right through the liver. If that liver is enlarged, if it's compromised. It's like a filter, Well, right? it, it's, it's going to impede the flow. Our body is loaded with toxins, heavy metals, pesticides, herbicides, toxins in general. How do those toxins get cleaned? Through the liver. What happens if those toxins can't get filtered? Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, dementia, neurodegenerative diseases. And again, what I'm saying right now, I'm not even sure that we can put out there, but it's okay, I'm gonna say it. I'm gonna say it. Because if you look up what these toxins do, it is a liver issue that the liver cannot detoxify. Okay, so let me back up one more thing. So what do we need to do? What we need to do is, you're not gonna avoid heavy metals, herbicides, pesticides, they're everywhere. Chlorine, fluoride, bromide, they're all. 
you have to clean your liver. Mm -hmm. Glutathione, mm -hmm. N-acetylcysteine, milk thistle, mm -hmm. sisandra, simple things like that. And you gotta exercise. The other system that is very overlooked is the lymphatic system. Oh, this is my jam. Even this morning, mm -hmm. I ran cold water, I did a contrast shower, and I put it like the big areas here, my groin, the lower back. My lymphatic system was shutting down. Mm -hmm. I could not get out of bed. Right. It is the sewage system. Mm -hmm. I do dry brushing. I do the rebounder every morning, the little mini trampoline. So right. I do the trampoline right. while my coffee is brewing. I have my whole community, all my they clients. Yes. So that's my morning thing, even if it's just five minutes. And then brushing. And then the dry brushing Light, before. Dry brushing. To explain to people the importance, because I talk about, and it's one thing saying, oh, well, Tiff is jumping on the trampoline and it's so cool, I wanna do it too. Mm -hmm. But how important is that? If you're not cleansing and getting that flow going, even right here with breast cancer, right. and those glands with women. Absolutely. Well, again, you said it's the sewage system, right? It's, it's, it's the drain, it's the sewers, if you will, that cleans all the junk out. If that water is stagnant, if there's a stagnation, what's going to happen? It's going to become more polluted. It's going to become, uh, uh, it's, this is where disease starts, yes. right? So something as simple as sitting on a ball and bouncing on that ball, it just makes everything move. And the lymphs, the lymphatic system is very, very sensitive to that. The other thing that you said was dry brushing. And I have this little brush and be very, it's a very, it can be a very sensual experience, right? I mean, think about this. Everything's got to go towards the heart, right? Yes. So it's got to, yes. it's got to, it's got to brush this yes. way. You got to brush this yes. way. It's got to brush this way. Imagine taking with your, just say, all right, sweetheart, lay down. Yeah. Let me get this brush and let me just rub this brush very gently on your body. Man, things are going to happen. Right. You're, you're going to be. Intimacy. Exactly. And you're boosting your immune system. Exactly. And... But think about that connection, right? Mm -hmm. Here you are doing dry brushing on somebody, you're bouncing, you're doing all this stuff together, and then you're, you're creating this, this oneness, you're creating this intimacy, and all of a sudden, your relationship is better, yes. you're, you're more intimate, you're more sensual, you're more passionate, you feel better. Is, is that a bad thing? <laughs> I mean, this We're is phenomenal. We're saving marriages here. We're saving marriages here. We're saving here. marriages here. A lot of people are waking up with so much anxiety right now is if you feel all that fear, I invite you to switch over into faith. So it's not about being fearless, and I know that is a powerful word we see on the scroll and, or on a quote, but we, we all feel fear. Fear is very real, it's what you do with it. Are you gonna let the fear take you down? Are you going to harness the fear, acknowledge it? Sassy, you fear, I got you, mm-hmm. And let it pass through you. It's when you think about it, think about it, think about it, and ruminate that it expands and takes you over. And if that happens, the anxiety does cause a physical reaction, and that's a panic attack. So before it gets to that point, you control it. I acknowledge this. That's when it's great to take a few deep breaths, calm your parasympathetic nervous system, and say, no, go into faith. Whatever that thing is that's causing you fear, Think of the opposite. Think of, think of the complete opposite of that situation. Maybe it's a relationship. Maybe it's finances. During 2020, maybe you lost your job. There are so many things, a long list of things that could keep us living fear-based, making decisions from that fear-based place, switch over into faith, and speaking life and positivity into it. 
Here's a snapshot of my morning. And I'm just gonna give you an example of what I do. You create your own. If I have an hour where I actually carve out that time, I'm an early riser. So waking up early does give me the luxury before the world starts. If I have an hour, it's beautiful. And Tony Robbins calls it the hour of power. So you get prepped, primed, pray, meditate, switch from fear to faith, live in gratitude. You literally are plugged into your power source. You get lit up with light. You're powerful and it doesn't take a lot of time. I take my coffee upstairs, I shut the door, I light a candle, put on the music, and I have a specific chair, and I like to cuddle up with a blanket, like something like this. I cuddle up with my blanket, and I breathe. I just get quiet, and I breathe. I hear the music, I journal, I get out my thoughts. I give a lot of gratitude. You know, we hear that often, make a gratitude list. It's powerful. Be thankful for everything in my life. So it starts to make all the things that you're focused on and create this big mountain of a problem. They look really small. And I literally welcome in peace. I welcome in love. I say, God, fill my mind, strengthen my mind, and I actually touch my body. I've had some, from the whiplash, I've had some lower back problems. I literally say, strengthen these places in my body that feel weak. And I literally feel on a cellular level I, I pray over myself. It's a simple prayer over myself. When's the last time you prayed for yourself? We pray for other people all the time, but pray over myself. And I visualize, I visualize, I visualize how my day's gonna go. I have key goals that I visualize the goals, the outcome that it's done, I see it, so that I can go out into the day and act as if it's already happened. I declare it, I claim it, I celebrate it. That's what I do. So I challenge you to create your own, even if you start with five minutes. This television series was produced by My Wellness by Nature, creating generation wellness together. See more at MyWellnessByNature.com. Coming up next week on our So Thrive three-part series, we travel from the east to the west coast as we uncover the art of better living from My Wellness by Nature medical contributors. A lot of doctors get comfortable with being comfortable. They don't want to feel like they don't know something. The average testosterone level for men has dropped 200 points. This is not an overnight fix. I have been on this journey of tweaking. Things started leveling out and then get the levels checked again. Unfortunately, a lot of people just feel like they're doomed or that they have a certain number of symptoms and that defines who they are. We'll see you here next week on So Thrive with Tiffany Hendra.